Mario Lopez may have been able to charm himself through Hollywood, but what is done in darkness will always come to light. Even paying his way out of those crimes won't expunge him from the wrong he's done. In my opinion, this man is a sellout and the industry loves him for it. Today, we're going to revisit Mario's dark past and his relationship with Britney Spears. So let's get into it. <music> So you guys definitely know Mario Lopez. He is an American actor, television, and radio host. When I was growing up, I feel like I saw his face everywhere, but he's definitely best known for his role on the show Saved by the Bell and for working with Entertainment Tonight. And I actually want to talk about an interview I came across earlier today. It was an interview between Mario and Britney Spears, where she was talking about having issues with men and having daddy issues. Here's that original clip. I can tell. I remember that. Men issues. Yeah, is that what it was? Daddy about? issues. Oh. Okay. But what Entertainment Tonight decided to air was actually edited, and they took out the part about her father, which I find very concerning because you guys know Hollywood is corrupt, and Entertainment Tonight was over here enabling Britney's father and protecting him by removing what Britney said about having daddy issues. Here is the edited clip. A man could suck your toe. <laughs> I remember that. Men issues. Yeah, is that what it was? <laughs> okay. I didn't know what, I, I don't know what that was. Obviously, Mario Lopez doesn't have the power to go and edit these clips, but he's definitely an enabler in the system. And today, I want to talk to you guys about his controversial past and his relationship with Britney Spears, because both are extremely bizarre, and I had no idea he was accused of such serious crimes. So I'm going to have to block out a bunch of words up here, but if you go to his Wikipedia page and you scroll down to the sources, you will see that he's been accused of the R word before, and all of the sources citing that information have been removed. So all of these articles I clicked on have been deleted from the internet. I don't quite understand why these sources were taken down because Mario Lopez was accused of serious crimes in 1993 and they were reported on, but now they're just missing from the internet. It's like, who is protecting this man? Well, I guess Mario Lopez is a Hollywood prodigy because he's been in the business ever since he was 10 years old, he was a super successful actor, and now he's like hosting everywhere, which it's giving me very much like Ryan Seacrest vibes, but I don't know. I think I like Ryan a little bit more, even though both of those guys have major issues. But today we're focusing on Mario. So let's go ahead and talk about this situation that went down in 1993. The Associated Press, which is a very reputable source, actually wrote an article on May 11th, 1993, which is actually my ex-boyfriend's, my best friend's, and my father's birthday. Like, why is everyone born on May 11th? I have two ex-boyfriends that are born on May 11th, so... Something with these Tauruses. But anyways, back to this horrible situation because an 18-year-old woman accuses a TV actor of the R word. Let's go ahead and read what they write. They say, police are investigating a teenager's claim that she was R-worded by Mario Lopez and he actually was 19 at the time. Actually, the detective was quoted saying that this was a case where the 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 victim, I guess, was the survivor at this point, but um, was actually drugged by Mario and, you know, obviously could not consent. And then he supposedly, allegedly R-worded her. I mean, that's what they're reporting here. I'm not the one making up this story. The Associated Press reported that at that point, Mario wasn't arrested and he was actually cooperating with detectives and denied all of the allegations. They claimed the 18-year-old woman wasn't injured, which I'm like, okay, maybe she wasn't physically injured, but obviously this is really traumatic. But it happened on the night of April 28th when she had gone to his house voluntarily. Here's another article from Variety and it has a few extra additional pieces of information like actually Mario Lopez had an attorney at the time and he said that uh, Mario denies all of these claims. Anybody who's met this kid or his family knows that he's just a really gentle soul and a good person which okay he could be a good person and commit a horrible crime. We're not like act, you know I mean anyways anyone could commit a crime like this and we can't just say oh Mario Lopez is a really good guy like that couldn't have happened don't believe her and it actually looks like it would have gone down at his parents property because he lives in the guest house next to his parents home so 
That's what was going on back in 1993. Actually, his attorney claims that this woman is making these allegations to gain exposure or money. And actually, the woman denied that, which if you guys think about the culture back in 1993, like it wasn't like, oh, all supportive of me too. Like this woman had to be very brave to go and report this to the police and to have like all of these different people saying like, oh, you're trying to get money out of it. Um, definitely must have been hard. As I stated earlier, a bunch of these articles have been wiped from the internet, but there was one article published in June that year. This would have been about two months after the crime took place, and pretty much prosecutors announced that they will not seek charges against Mario Lopez of the supposed R-word of two local women. Like, I don't understand this situation because I'm trying to find sources on it, and we got one woman who accused him of doing this. And then now we've got two women according to this one article and actually they bring up the second woman and the incident went down supposedly in 1991 but this is the only article I could find about this second victim of Mario's but I find it really interesting that two women came forward. It actually looks like after the first woman came forward the second woman felt more comfortable coming forward and she made it public that Mario supposedly R-worded her in 1991. Supposedly the deputy claims that there were no evidence to support either allegation, so both of them were thrown out. If you guys have seen Saved by the Bell, you've probably heard of Dustin Diamond. This man worked with Mario Lopez on that show, and he actually publicly said that uh, Mario did this, that he actually committed these crimes that he has been accused of. According to Dustin, he was quoted saying that Mario lured a woman back to his pad, and then she was forced to do it with him against her will. Dustin's book was titled Behind the Bell, and actually chapter one was titled AC Makes the Ladies Scream, and pretty much Dustin claims that Mario would use his role from Saved by the Bell, AC Slater, to go and attract women. He actually calls him a womanizer. He claims that Mario hit on every one of their co-stars and even the people who worked in production. He would even go and hit on fans if he could. He was constantly trying to hit on people, which is probably why people think that Mario is so charming because he gives off that vibe and he, you know, has his smile with his dimples. But Dustin claims that it's all manipulation. But you guys are probably wondering, what happened to that woman? Did she just like disappear because she got a bunch of shame from the public for accusing AC Slater of doing such a crime? But it actually looks like it's more complicated than that because it looks like NBC was also trying to protect Mario. According to a variety of sources and Dustin, they claim that NBC actually paid the first woman $50,000 to keep her mouth shut, we don't know what happened to the second woman who accused him of these crimes, but at least I found a few articles that claim that NBC paid her $50,000 to shut up and go away to protect Mario's image. If you think about all of the projects that Mario has been involved in, I mean, in my opinion, it seems like he's an industry plant because he's always there, always available, always on TV for whatever reason. And who's putting him up there? I mean, it's got to be someone powerful. But I want to speak a little bit about his character because I feel like Dustin really hinted on him being kind of, you know, like a playboy. And I also feel like he's not the greatest guy when it comes to love and friends and all of that. I mean, we need to talk about his first marriage. So Ali Landry was actually a competitor in the 1998 Miss Teen USA pageant and actually that's where she met Mario and the two hit it off. They actually dated for six years until they were married and they only were together for two weeks after that point because Mario went and cheated on his new wife. You guys know how I feel about cheaters, and back in 2004, this article was published, and someone was quoted saying that Mario had cheated on Ali for years, and she just found out last week, like one week into their marriage. That same source was quoted saying that they never had a honeymoon, and he was out at a club last week without his wife. It's pretty outstanding to think that this couple was together for six years, and then got married, and two weeks later, they were broken up. I mean, 
and guys, I understand, like, in Hollywood, it's like high school. These relationships really don't last. But I do believe that Mario is a manipulative man and that he put Allie in a really compromising situation. Even though that one article claims that Mario was cheating on her for years, he only admits to cheating on her during a bachelor party in Mexico. He told Howard Stern that he was messing around with another woman and that it was spring break in Mexico and everyone was hanging out and that was a situation where he was not mature or man enough. It gets worse because Mario actually lied to his wife about the premise of the trip and he never told her the truth. And it actually took a photo of Mario cheating on his wife for her to find out. Somehow, Allie's sister actually got a hold of that photo and she shared it with Allie. And obviously, I'm sure she was just stunned in that moment because can you imagine you just married this man and you found out he's been cheating on you? And what I think is disgusting about Mario is that he feels so comfortable going around and kind of like flexing about this situation in a way like he's the type of person to go and hurt someone else and then write a whole book about it and just be like you know what like I don't know, I'm going to make some money off of this. And I, it really irks me because it gives me that vibe that he's just not authentic in any way. I mean, he admitted to the press that he never loved his wife, Allie, in the first place. Keep in mind that they were dating for six years years before they got married. Whatever that young lady did to him in Mexico made him wake up and realize that Ali wasn't the one for him. And I just think it's kind of cringe how he like admits to this now and like I guess he understands that he's wrong, but it also sounds like he's just blaming it on like them not being right for each other. And there's a lot of questionable things that Mario has done in the past. I mean, we need to talk about his relationship with Britney Spears because something is really uncomfy here. Like, I am so uncomfortable. Like, something needs to stop immediately. We've talked about this in a previous video, but Mario Lopez was quoted saying that Britney Spears has a lot of good people around her, which if you guys think about Britney's life, I mean, she doesn't like the people around her, and she told the judge that her father gets off on her experiencing pain and being tortured by him. Listen to Mario tell this reporter that Britney's got good people around her and that he's actually friends with her father, Jimmy Spears. I just wish her the best and, and, and hope she's uh, happy. I happen to know her and her father and the family and their management and all that. She's around, she's got a lot of good people around her. So um, hopefully everything gets uh, figured out and she'll be happy. What would be the point of Mario going against his friend, Brittany, by saying that she's got good people around her when she has said publicly that she's not happy? It makes me think maybe he's paid off because he seems like the type where if you just give him enough money, he'll say whatever you want. And you guys know Brittany's father's lawyers have been spending half a million dollars on Media Matters, so I wouldn't be surprised if a little bit went to Mario, allegedly, supposedly. But there's another clip I need to talk to you guys about when it comes to Mario because there was a whole segment about Andrew Wallet, who is someone who used to be involved in Britney's conservatorship. He's not a good guy. If you guys have not seen my videos, definitely go and check them out. But there was this interview, and actually Mario was quoted saying that Britney seemed pretty free to him. He said, she looks pretty free to me in reference to Britney living her life. And it just seems like it's very dismissive of the whole free Britney movement and what Britney has been telling the public. If you follow Britney on social media, she seems pretty free to me. It's very unusual for an independent adult who makes the kind of money that she makes to have a conservator over her daily activities. Think of this relationship as a parent-child one, yet Britney Spears is 38 years old. The fact that Mario has the balls to go and say, she looks pretty free to me. Like, excuse me, she looks pretty free to me. That is just so dismissive of a friend. And it makes me think that he's not friends with Britney, but maybe friends with team conservatorship and I hate to drag Britney's boyfriend into this but you guys know I've made a video about him before and I do question his intentions especially when I see him over here with Mario. Mario is featured in one of many of Sam's promoted and sponsored posts on Facebook. There are so many posts coming out from Sam Asghari's like Facebook page. I don't know who's running it but as you guys can see um, Mario Lopez over there uh, hanging out with our boy Sam Asghari 
story and it makes me think that these two are coordinating together and like honestly it gets into conspiracy realms but like what is going on here like and I'm sure Brittany wasn't there. It's just kind of bizarre. Like, Brittany's not invited. She's not allowed out of the house. But Sam can go and hang out with all these guys like Mario and such. Remember that interview I just played for you guys from page six where uh, Mario claims that she's got a lot of good people around her? Well, actually, one of our friends on Twitter tweeted out that video. They wrote, this is so transparent. Industry puppet Mario Lopez claims that those around Britney Spears, like her father and her team, are good people. Emphasis on the industry plant part because guess who liked this tweet? Well, Mario Lopez's wife, Courtney Lopez, actually liked our friend's tweet. Again, emphasis on the industry puppet, like industry plant. Honestly, same thing. He's just giving me that energy. And I think it's weird that his wife is going over here looking up his name, I guess, and liking tweets in reference to him. Um, a little bizarre, but she did unlike it. I guess she didn't want to get in trouble with Mario, but also like, can you imagine if she agrees and she's like, yeah, he is. And I'm like, oh no, the shade. There's one last thing I need to talk about in reference to Mario Lopez. And it's the fact that he claims that he had a one night stand with Britney Spears. So Mario was going around to the press telling them that he had a one night stand with a mega pop star, aka Britney Spears. If they were trying truly friends, do you think that Britney would want him going around and saying these things? Because he's claiming that he's not trying to give too much away, but he had a one night stand with a mega pop star. And he claims Britney was single at the time. Actually, it was right when she split from her husband, Kevin Federline in 2006, when uh, Mario Lopez was on a break with his girlfriend, Karina, from 2006 to 2008. And supposedly during that point, they had a one night stand. Maybe Britney sees something in Mario that we don't see. I have no idea because he's always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And honestly, I'm going to say this with all respect. Like I was a little bit surprised to find out that he has kids and he's had wives because honestly, I didn't know that he was like into women. And I'm, again, I'm trying to say that with all respect, but um, yeah, he supposedly really is and supposedly a womanizer according to Dustin. And I still find it really like unbelievable that these women were just paid off by NBC because if like I, I just don't understand like you don't just pay off someone who's making up a lie you don't just pay off someone who's um you know trying to get clout off of this so if they like if they were r worded by Mario like there's a reason why NBC at least paid off that one woman and we don't even know who the other one is and again guys the reason why I really want to bring that up is because all of the articles are removed from the internet so why because they can always go back and correct the article but why were they removed. It makes me think that a more powerful entity forced them to remove it. But if you guys have any other video ideas for me, here is my email below. A few guys, a few of you guys like recommended this one. I was like, you know what? Sure, I'm gonna do it. So I love when you guys recommend things, and I always go through my emails, even if I don't reply right away. I'm always seeing them, and then I type in a name like Mario Lopez, and there's a few emails, and I'm like, okay, cool. You guys want to see this, so let's do it, and let's go ahead and open this PO box package item. It looks like it's from Adrian, and it looks like she is lo or they are located in um, the United States in the Midwest. I don't like to say state, like the actual state, because people were like, you're doxing people. And I'm like, okay, I'm not trying to dox people. I was literally just trying to like introduce like who sent me this. But ooh, let's go ahead and see what they sent to me. If you guys ever want to send me anything, no pressure at all. But ooh, it looks like we've got some pins over here and they have a brand. So everything will be listed below. Oh my gosh, this plastic's all over the place. Um, thank you so much for making the amazing content you do. I've enjoyed every video I've seen of yours. To show my appreciation, I wanted to send you and your partner off some of the enamel pens that I've designed and sold. My website is on the card if you want to see more or want to put in your put it in your description, which I definitely will. Um, keep up the awesome work, Adrian. P.S. The Black Lives Matter pen glows in the dark. Oh, that's so awesome. Okay, so we've got this one. Oh my gosh, these are really cool. This one right here, which is like... Uh, I need to get out. So it looks like it's a Frappuccino, like a rainbow Frappuccino or something. Like, doesn't that look like a Frappuccino? <gasps> that is so cool, guys. This one's so cute. And they're actually like, really nicely made because there's like two backs to them. And let's see the next one. So we've got, oh, another one. It's like a coffee, like Frappuccino thing. And it says, um, oh, it says Pride on it. Cool. So it's like actually a Pride one. And then we've got, um, 
Oh, the Black Lives Matter one that glows in the dark. <gasps> That's awesome. See, like this bright light's gonna make it like <laughs> fill with energy. So, oh, uh, thank you so much, Adrian. I love these pens so much. Definitely go check out her shop. I really appreciate you sharing these with me, and it's so cool that you make these. Like, holy crap! I don't even know where I'd begin to try to make these. So, definitely go check out her shop. It will be linked below, and I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye, guys. Bye.